Hey guys, Modzy here, back with another video. Uh, I just want to apologise if there hasn't been a video in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the last two videos that I actually produced on the exact same day, very early in February, and unfortunately on that uh, same day I found out that my grandfather had passed away. And because he was such a huge influence on who I am in terms of all the tech and the PC side of uh, like my, my hobbies essentially, um, it was a really tough uh, it's been a really tough month. So, uh, on top of that, my fiance and I have been absolutely going really crazy with all the wedding stuff, uh, and so my free time has pretty much been zero. Uh, and done a bit of travelling and, and uh, went to my grandfather's funeral and spent some time with family and stuff. So it's been a little bit of a crazy month this month. So everything that I've wanted to actually plan to film in early 2018 has kind of been pushed back by almost an entire month. So I do apologise. I've got several videos in the works that kind of just went completely like paused because I just couldn't uh, didn't have time to work on them and I kind of struggled a little bit to find the motivation to do go back and do those videos at the moment because I've been really focused on doing this particular video because I've been really excited to do it and I finally got all the parts and stuff for it so what, what, what am I talking about okay today I'm doing my first uh, like retro build with you guys um, and this is a very targeted build uh, and, and what I mean by that is I wanted a build that was Windows 98 focused that is a full-time retro machine that I'm gonna have set up permanently and I wanted it to enable me to play not only DOS games like uh, Duke Nukem 2, the Network Q rally game that I've got uh, and a couple of other DOS games but I also wanted it to be just powerful enough to be able to make uh, games like Quake 2, Unreal Tournament 99, uh, Need for Speed 3 and 4, uh, System Shock 2 and Half-Life, I wanted to be able to play those games on it at a good frame rate and have a good experience with that as well, but also be able to have a slow enough CPU in a way that would enable me to run uh, some of the DOS games I wanted to natively at a very smooth and normal frame rate rather than like the crazy stuff all jumping around the screen in that. So let's check out the hardware that I went with and I'll explain what I'm going to do in terms of why this is going to be sort of a two-part uh, video because I reckon you guys are going to really like what I've got planned for the second part for this uh, for this sort of mini-series in a way because I'm going completely all out in building this uh, retro PC. But for now, let's check out where I'm starting, like what's the base level hardware I'm starting with. So I'm going to move the camera to here so to give you an overhead view of the bits and pieces. I'm going to talk about um, the uh, the bits and pieces that I've got individually for you. And uh, so I'm going to get the camera set up and uh, we'll go from there. Be right back. All right, guys. So what did I end up settling on in terms of hardware? Well, I found this really funky little motherboard here. This cool little guy. Uh, this is a motherboard by a company called FIC or FIC uh, and I'll put just here on screen somewhere the uh, proper name of that uh, company. Um, this is the CE31-A. It is an SIS620 chipset with a socket 370 uh, socket on here. One ISA slot, three PCI slots and your two SD uh, RAM slots as well. Uh, this does have onboard uh, video, which was kind of important because depending on the particular video card I wanted to use, especially if I went 3DFX, I may have had to use the onboard as the 2D uh, graphics renderer and the 3D being a voodoo card if I ended up going with one of those. So this was the perfect platform to base this system around. This had the perfect restrictions and also the perfect flexibility range in terms of the high end and the low end of hardware that I could put into this for this uh, project build. So let's talk about the restrictions that this motherboard have that I was looking for. This, even though it does have the socket 370 uh, socket on here, does not support the uh, Pentium 3 CPUs that I already owned. I have two, in fact, I actually have two one gig Pentium 3s but this was originally what I was going to be basing this system around. This is actually a 700 megahertz Pentium 3. And this was pretty much the ballpark performance, give or take, in terms of what I was aiming for for this system. However, this CPU is a little bit too fast, even for some of the DOS games that I wanted to play. So I was a little bit curious about whether this was going to be good enough. Uh, I do also happen to have an 800 megahertz Celeron as well. 
Um, and one of the other ch uh, chipsets of directions that I was going to go with potentially was also with my Athlon XP 2200 plus, but I decided against that was way too fast. So this motherboard supports six CPUs, I believe six or seven CPUs only, and that's it. And they are these funky little CPUs right here. And if I can just there we go. This is a Intel Celeron. Uh, there we go, Intel Celeron. And this is based on the Pentium 2 architecture, which is really, really neat. So this is a 66 megahertz front side bus CPU, which uh, this motherboard only supports 66 megahertz front side bus on both the CPU and the RAM. Um, and the range of CPUs that this motherboard's, motherboard supports is, I think it's 233 or 266 is the, the slowest, and 533 megahertz is the fastest. This particular CPU is the 433 megahertz version. Um, so, and I apologize there, I actually picked up the wrong one. This is the 433 megahertz version. Uh, this one is actually, in fact, the 533 megahertz version that I bought uh, off eBay for like six dollars um, to test it out uh, to see what the difference was between going from the 4, uh, 433 and the 533. Uh, so let me just put that one back down. Uh, so the 433 version, uh, which is what came in the bundle with this motherboard, was going to provide a perfect uh, like starting starting you know place to be whether. Uh, it was going to be fast enough or too slow or whatever and then I could buy another CPU uh, either like the higher model or the lower model depending on uh, the performance level of this CPU. So that's the CPU and motherboard combination I went with. Uh, this being having an ISA slot meant that it was going to be compatible with my uh, six, uh, uh, Sound Blaster Creative 16 as well. So when I want to chuck in and do some DOS games, I'm going to be running this alongside a secondary sound card uh, because the stereo that plugs into this uh, that I'm going to be using on this build has dual inputs. So I can have both the DOS uh, ISA sound card and a PCI sound card as well. And then I can just toggle between the two sound cards on the stereo depending on what games I was playing, whether I was in DOS or 98, which is really, really cool. Um, cool story. This is my original Sound Blaster card that I had from my auntie's PC, which was the first PC I ever bought, uh, or ever, I didn't buy it, sorry, I got it from my auntie. Uh, first PC that I ever used, and this thing was awesome. It introduced me to the world of music coming out of a computer rather than out of a CD player or a Walkman. So um, I got to tinker with this pretty cool. And this is a really nice sound card and it still works, which is really, really nice. Oh, and the model of this is the CT2940, just in case you want to know, uh, from 1995. But the secondary sound card that I wanted to pair alongside the other one is this creative sound card. This one is the Sound Blaster Live original gold, nice gold contacts on here, really, really good condition. Uh, this is the CT4620. Uh, this is from 1998, the original Sound Blaster Live. This one I found, again, really, really cheap on eBay. This was, I think, $16 Australian uh, from overseas. It had a little bit of price issue. I think, I think it was like $12 shipping, which is not too bad, to be honest. Um, I think it came from uh, Europe somewhere, I think, I believe, or this one actually might have come from Asia. My, actually, this is, yeah, this one I think come from China, sorry, my bad. Uh, but um, yeah, this is a really, really nice sound card. This thing worked in Windows 98 perfectly. I had no issues with the creative drivers. Windows 98 picked it up and detected it straight away. And most, most importantly, it worked alongside this card here. So I could have both of them with the drivers installed and I could switch between them depending on what game I wanted to play, which was really cool, uh, which was also a really, really cool thing. So I'm gonna be running both of the sound cards in this as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, then we come on to RAM and I ended up settling on, I have an entry level point here, like a, like a baseline in terms of the smallest amount of RAM, which I have here, PC6632 megabytes, uh, which is obviously 32 meg of PC66. 66 megahertz uh, dual-sided SD RAM. This is like the smallest and slowest amount of RAM. Uh, in fact, the, the motherboard only supports 66 megahertz front-side bus RAM, so which is really, really cool. Um, 
So uh, this was a good starting point to see how much RAM I really, really needed for this system, which is really cool. And I also have this stick here, which is a bit of a mystery. I actually have several uh, SD RAM sticks, but most of them are 100 megahertz or 133 megahertz. And usually they're the ones that I've got are like 128, 256, and I've even got a 512 meg stick as well. This one here is a 128 meg PC 30, uh, 133 stick, so it's 133 megahertz. However, this motherboard does not support 133 megahertz RAM. In fact, all the other memory sticks that I've got, none of them worked. But when I put this one in, it just worked. I didn't have to, like, the motherboard, because the, the, this is actually a compact based motherboard, it has a compact BIOS. There is no overclocking settings, there is no manual settings of any of the hardware at all other than just uh, enabling or disabling some of the, the, you know, the basic stuff on the motherboard. Uh, you cannot tweak the RAM, you cannot tweak the CPU, you cannot do anything. So I was really shocked that this stick of RAM just worked perfectly. So uh, it was a bit of a surprise. So what did I want to do in terms of video card? So I actually have two Voodoo 2s still. Uh, and I originally was going to be running these two cards. However, the motherboard that I've got having only three PCI slots, and while it does have the onboard video, which is good because I can run that in 2D mode and then loop that back through to these uh, for 3D, um, the problem is, is that with the sound card in one PCI slot and these taking up the other two PCI slots, I actually have a third card that I was wanting to put in the system, and that is a USB um, expansion card, so I have more USB ports in the system, because at the moment, the motherboard, the motherboard only has the two USB ports here, and there is actually no USB front panel headers or internal headers on this motherboard at all, um, which was a bit of a problem. So it's kind of forced me to have to put in a PCI USB uh, expansion card, which I've, uh, I've actually got coming in the mail at the moment. Um, there, in fact, there's the, the, this, the other version, the other model number of this motherboard does actually support USB uh, with the pins here, but they're not on this board. They're, in fact, the chip and everything for the USB is missing on this board. So um, I needed more USB because I've got other devices that I wanted to plug into this other than just a mouse and keyboard. So, I was limited to a single PCI slot for the video card. So, then I was going to go back to just using one of these. Now, these are uh, the Magic 3D Voodoo, th uh, Voodoo 2 uh, cards, 12 meg versions. But, there's a problem with these cards. I have had these for a long, 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 long time. Many, many, like over 10 years I've had these cards for. And... These were originally working when I bought them, and they were working all the way up until about 2012, 2013, when I put them away in storage before I started my video card collection, and they ended up getting damaged. So, on this card, um, if I can just, da, 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 if I can just show you, there's a bit of damage there, and I believe on one of the corners here as well. Um, now it's repairable damage, so I am going to be able to fix it with like a very like a magnifying glass and a pin. I'll be able to just uh, like rebend and actually just fix these. It's not really badly damaged that they're broken; they're just bent a little bit, so they're repairable. Uh, and then I know that these uh, these cards work because I've actually used them previously. Uh, and I haven't run them since they've been broken because I noticed it before I put them back in a system. Um, so, limiting myself to one of these wasn't quite going to be good enough for the level of performance that I actually wanted to have for 3D. Um, the RAM was, 12 mega RAM was okay. That was kind of the minimum that I wanted to go with. Um, ideally, the performance of what two of these has is what I was looking for in terms of the uh, 3D horsepower that I wanted out of this machine. So, I put those aside and I ended up grabbing this little card here because I've never owned one of these before, never ended up using one of these before, but this is... 
There we go. This is a TNT2 M64 16 meg PCI card by NVIDIA. And this I thought was going to be the perfect uh, level of performance. Uh, it was comparable, give or take, to the two Voodoo 2s in SLI. Uh, in fact, they're actually a little bit faster than what this card is. But this was still uh, faster than one of the Voodoo 2s. So I kind of figured, okay, that's a compromise. It's faster than one of them. It's got slightly more VRAM, which is obviously a little bit better. And it also has really good driver uh, support and uh, compatibility with Windows 98. And of course, more importantly, it's a single slot card that also does not require uh, like a separate 2D card or the onboard video to actually use it. So this is what I ended up with for now. Um, let's just say I'm not 100% happy with the performance of this. So I am going to be looking at a different card for the final version of this build, but that will come in part two of this video. Um, so this is what I've got to start with, and this works really, really well. So, let's move on to some of the uh, other final components. So, uh, the cool little funky uh, CPU and fan heatsink that actually came with the motherboard and CPU, uh, which is really, really nice. It's in really good condition. It was a little bit dusty, but I cleaned it out and it works perfectly fine. Again, this will work perfectly fine for the initial testing and the initial form of this system uh, when I first put it together. But I've actually already bought a different CPU cooler for the second part two of this video when we actually go through and build the system and uh, put it all together. So other bits of hardware, of course, uh, importantly, we needed a floppy drive. So I have this uh, nice silver faceplate uh, floppy drive here from uh, Alps Electronics Co. This was just bought off eBay, uh, made in Malaysia. It works perfectly fine. I've been using it now for a couple of months and it is awesome. Uh, here we go. All right, other thing is the power supply that I'm gonna be using. Now I use uh, very specific models of power supplies for my retro builds. In fact, I've had this one now for about two years. Uh, originally it was gonna be my Windows XP power supply, but this is a power supply by Seasonic and it's just the SS430GB uh, active. Uh, it's 430 watt power supply, which is a modern power supply, which means it's got a lot more reliability um, compared to something from 1999. Uh, and this thing works really well. And importantly, it's also very quiet given that it's got a, a nice slow RPM 120 mil fan. Um, but as you'll see in a minute, silence is not what this system is all about. But again, this is a really, really nice power supply. I've had it for a long time and it is rock stable and works perfect for this sort of power level of, uh, of systems. So, uh, DVD drive, uh, which I'm not actually using as a DVD drive, but it is the only IDE drive that I've got. Works with Windows 98 as just this nice standard uh, CD drive, which really, really is really, really cool. And you'll see I've already got the rails mounted on this because I have already actually had this in the system and tested it and have been using it for a couple of years now. Actually, I've just got the rails on it because I've been using it in the particular case that I've got over there at the moment. Um, the motherboard did actually come with this IO shield. This is not the original IO shield, however, because this actually has a port here for a network uh, port, uh, which this motherboard does not actually have an onboard network card at all on it. Uh, but it does have everything else in the right position, so um, the guy probably just threw it in with the motherboard knowing that it fits. Uh, but there's a hole there, which is a bit funky, but anyway. Uh, then the other thing is the hard drives. And this was another really important thing that I wanted to have authentic to a 1999 PC. And I just so happened to already have the perfect hard drives that I wanted to use for this. And that is these two drives here. These are Quantum Fireball Plus drives, the AS uh, models. And these are both 30 gig drives, really, really nice drives, these ones. Um, yeah, there's a yeah, Quantum Fireball AT Fireball, uh, sorry, 30 gig AT Fireball Plus AS models, and then there's a couple of part numbers there. Uh, but these two drives I got out of a dumpster dive PC probably four or five years ago. I've had these for a really, really long time now, and uh, I absolutely love the sound that these these hard drive makes. Uh, these hard drives make is really awesome. It's just that authentic, really loud. Uh, you can hear everything that these hard drives do. Um, 
Some people like that sound, some people hate it. I think it's a very authentic sound uh, for this era of hardware. So, and 30 gig was obviously very big for this era of uh, system that we're running. You may notice one of them doesn't have a screw. Yes, one of them's missing a screw. Uh, but that's kind of handy for me because without drawing or writing on them, it means that I can distinguish between which one's which. So I never get them confused uh, depending on which one's the OS drive and which one's like the storage drive, for example. So, that's all the main components that I'm going to be using in this system at the moment. Um, really, really happy again with this motherboard. I'm really happy with the uh, CPUs that I've got. I, uh, as I mentioned, I have got the 533 megahertz uh, Intel Celeron here, and I have been testing and using this already in, in, in the system. It works really, really well. So stick around for part two of this video where we're going to be installing all the hardware in the system. I'm going to be talking to you about some of the performance and then uh, reveal to you guys pretty much the final form of what I ended up doing in terms of upgrading this system and the level of performance with benchmarks numbers uh, from games and things like that. Uh, I can't wait because this system is going to be a lot of fun to play with. Um, sneaky behind the scenes thing here, I've already been using this for a couple of weeks now and I absolutely love it. But I wanted to make sure that this was definitely the platform I wanted to go with before doing a video on it. So um, really, really happy. So stay tuned, the next video in this series, uh, the, the follow up to this will be a couple of weeks away because I'm waiting for a couple more parts to arrive and they're about one and a half to two weeks away from arriving. And I need them to do that second part of the video. So that's why that's why I've had to split this video up and why I wanted to do this part now, talking about the main hardware and uh, why I wanted to build it. And um, I'll get to the, the building phase and the performance and then the upgrade and the final performance in the second video. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this is gonna be a really fun, funky little uh, Windows 98 build. Can't wait to put it together for you guys and uh, show you guys how it runs. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.